So next up will be Andrew Bartlett, who's apparently been fixing some junior programmer's mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've, um, yeah, the, the, the title is it Tridge's Personal Insistence. Um, so I work for Catalyst and um, we uh, develop Samba for uh, our customers and for the world. Um, and so we've been, um, Work, work on the Active Directory demo and controller part of Samba. So the, the file server stuff I can work on, but um, I've really made my career out of this um, identity business. And so I'm now the team lead for Catalyst's uh, developers there. Um, so that out of the way. In our wildest dreams, we never really imagined the scale that we now have Samba Active Directory getting to. Um, we <coughs> We have users deploying at that scale of 26,000 users and just saying, hey, it just works. Um, but the scale that we're actually able to put in a database in a feasible time, now this isn't, you know, you can run it with this scale. We don't really have those numbers really to hand yet. But just to get you an idea of where we've gone with being able to make the database um, able to cope, um, the last few releases, each one, we've been able to pick down one and two real hot spots that were getting in the way of making Samba really fast. So we are scaling up, and um, with Samba 4.8 that we'll be releasing in March, uh, we expect that it's practical to, to ingest 100,000 users into the database in a, um, and, and add them in, most importantly, two groups, because users without groups aren't really that interesting, um, within a two-hour period. You know, you wait longer, it will get longer. But one of the things that I noticed, I forgot to uh, add the graph in on here, but we're no longer um, on a, a graph that was really looking with a big upward tick where the last few users were taking you know, a long time to add. It's, it's working as being a linear growth in time. Still not linear um, O1, but we're at, we're at least we're only going at ON for the, uh, for the time to add those new users. Um, so we're, we're getting to the point where Samba is um, actually practical for some quite large installations, which is helpful because we've got some quite large installations coming our way. Uh, some of our customers um, Talk, gave some talks at uh, Samba XP, and um, one of them is deploying Samba into the French government. And they want to move whole ministries of the French government from their existing Samba Open LDAP installs, and Open LDAP scales very nicely. Um, but because Samba 4 needs its own internal LDAP server, they, we needed to make ours work. So we did that because we needed to do a few things to make it work. Uh, we made a few mistakes. Um, some things that just seemed, oh yeah, look, we'll make something LDB-like. We call it, um, we, uh, we, LDB was something LDB, LDAP-like, the LDAP-like database that was just a flat file. It was meant to be simple. We looked at the way um, most, many of you will have had the joy of setting up Open LDAP. Uh, how many of you enjoyed it? <laughs> oh, wow. Um, so we built a new flat file database that, you, that had an LDAP-like structure. And um, it, there was no configuration required, no guessing around with DB config values, which was the thing you had to do at the time. Um, but we made a few mistakes. Um, we thought we, we, we got one thing right, which is that we put the, we case folded the user's uh, distinguished name when we put it into the database. Um, but then when we put the index records together, which was a second phase, uh, we forgot to case fold the value we put in the index. So every time you pull an index record, you then get to go and do the case fold work before, before pulling the record. Silly things like that. So now what I've done is I've changed it across so all of our database records are GUID based. Um, GUIDs are, are exceedingly common throughout Active Directory. So um, it made um, searches like 30% faster by just having all of the values being, OK, here to here. It's just mem copies and none of this busy unpacking and string can, String uppering and ugh. little mistakes, but they add up once we start getting to the scale of well, you know, we're actually going to have a you know a, a, a government department using it. Some of the other things that we kind of got a little bit wrong was oh, locking. Who here thinks you need to take out locks when you're reading a database? A couple of people. Good, good. Yeah. So um, we we forgot. Um, we were sort of safe. We, we did the, the underlying database layer, TDB, would, um, would take out a lock for the individual record we were operating on. But that was not the safety guarantee we were pretending to provide to our clients. LDAP has a rule that from the start to the end of an LDAP operation, the database is consistent. 
So um, you, can't, you don't end up with, if you do a search and the database is being attempted to be modified at the same time, you're not meant to see those modifications. Well, we didn't do that. Um, and what this meant actually was that our performance was less. Because if we'd taken our full database lock, then we would have seen, uh, as we went to return each entry, we would have said, oh, we've got the whole DB lock, just bang, 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 bang. Instead we went, okay, next entry. Oh, kernel, lock please. Oh, next lock please. Next lock, it was, it scaled horribly. Um, it, it, we, we suffered from this for almost 10 years. Um, a, 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 a commit went in in 2009 with the innocuous title of fixed nested searches inside LDB modules. Um, yeah, that, that, it, it, uh, it forgot to um, decrement a, um, a counter as to the nested, nested state of locks. Um, that's one that perhaps is best titled for the fix, fixing Tridges mistakes, as um, that one has Tridges name on it and probably was, was just as involved in me just as much as well. Um, but these little things that have gone on, we are now at the point of actually basically fixing up issues that were based in what we were doing. I'm moving very fast from here. Um, but the other main issue is that replication, uh, it became a real risk to replication. So things we've got better. Samba 4.6 has made the net logon connections, which are used for um, authentication from all the domain members. Then I'm multi-process. Really important if you've got all of your laptops doing 802.1x authentication, like many people still do. We've got a multi-process LDAP server. Um, previously, it was. Uh, all shoved into one, that was not so good. Now instead we fill the system memory with all these forked children. Not so good either. So now we're going to go and have a pre forked model and try and go, okay, you've got four CPUs, you probably want four, four LDAP servers to run. We're getting there. Uh, we're going to remove the rest of the N squared kind of stuff as we find them. We've got to redo our index handling. Uh, but the most important big change that's coming up is LMDB from, uh, from CIMAS. So we're going to try and look at that database. I've got some developers working that at the moment um, back in Wellington. Um, so we're going to remove the 4 gig limit uh, because we never managed to get that um, removed from TDB in previous, previous efforts. Um, and so that will allow us to bring to much larger database sizes. Um, for some reason, our customers don't like the idea that their whole operation might stop if we get to that limit and there might be no way to fix that. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll get ahead of that. Uh, last year I talked about performance tool, so we can record, we can replay traffic, and so you can actually load test what your actual networks do to your Samba domain controller, or your Windows one if, that mat, if, that, if that's how you float your boat. But the, um, you can then amplify the traffic as well. So you can go and uh, replay out, no one else seems to have a tool that was able to generate all the kind of traffic you see on an Active Directory network. Um, this is a pile of um, squiggly lines, but uh, from the zero point where I put that star, you can see how we've dropped, uh, so uh, lower is better for performance. And you can see that in general we've um, dropped um, most of the performance measures. One of the few that, ha few that did go up, uh, we recently did, did find was indeed a regression. Um, and um, so we're now using this um, monitoring of performance. We've got a machine at Catalyst that just, um, whenever it's idle, it goes and does, picks a random Git branch and runs the performance test on it. And so we've got a pretty good idea um, how we're going when we're making performance sensitive changes and actually have some data behind it rather than just going, I think that improves performance. Uh, beyond um, performance, we also have encrypted secrets. So we now ha allow you to encrypt the most key, uh, basic column level encryption um, for our database. Uh, it's still just a local file next to a local file, but you can decide it's much easier to provision out a, a key file than it is to provision out the whole database. Um, so you could, for example, have that only available from the network in the right spot. Unix compatible passwords is really important for those who are trying to synchronize to open LDAP. And audit logging, I'm surprised we got this far without having really good audit logging in Samba. Um, so we now have spit out JSON that should be really good for these log ingestion systems that people are coming up with these days. RODC support's finally there. And enterprise reliability, we are now actually in use in large companies. But the way I really knew that we were ready for the enterprise was when HP Enterprise turned up and said that they were really determined to get this going on HP UX. I kid you not, they, I kept on trying to bat them as this guy away. Why the, just run a Linux VM, run a Linux VM until he returned from his HP Enterprise address saying, no, this is sort of part of what we want to try to do. Can you really help us integrate with our OSF1 endpoint mapper? Oof. We'll make it work because NT was OSF1 you know, stuff as well. So 
you know, it's actually the same protocols, <laughs> just as horrible. MIT Kerberos support is coming along. Uh, it's a very, I, I still consider it work in progress. The developers involved um, feel very much that it's there, but they're kind of aborted on the first running when 4.7 came out. Um, I'm going to try and upgrade our, our internal Heimdall to something less than five years old in the meantime while we get over that boat. Finally, just a note that in the last day we finally had a patch come in to fix a serious data loss if you upgrade your 4.6 domain controllers directly to 4.7 by just upgrading packages rather than building a new machine. Um, if you join a new machine, you're fine, but the in-place upgrade, we, we kind of mucked up. Um, please support the Software Freedom Conservancy. They do great work in keeping the Samba project um, with a good legal home. Um, and finally, um, this is who I work for, and if you are a sysadmin and would love to work in the windy city of Wellington, then um, please talk to me. Uh, if you're keen to hack Samba, talk to me also, because that's always very interesting. Thank you.